Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing. Hey guys, welcome to another bonus episode of the Blessed and Bossed Up podcast. Hey y'all, we didn't have a bonus episode last week, um, but that's just because your girl had a lot going on <laughs> and it was either going to be my sanity or that bonus episode. And I'm sorry, but the bonus episode had to go. I'm still on low power mode until further notice. And so one of the things about that is my yeses have to be yeses and my noes be noes. And so I told the podcast it will be all right. <laughs> it will be all right. Um, but something awesome that happened over the past week, though, is I celebrated four years self-employed. On May 3rd, 2017 was my last day working a nine to five. And I remember that day like it was yesterday because one of the partners at the accounting firm that I worked at is actually where my husband and I met. And I was on the marketing and business development team. One of the, the partners there on my way out, because in my uh, resignation letter, I had said, if you go to my Instagram, I posted it. I had said that I was in a position to finally work for myself. And so I remember just that final goodbye exit interview type of situation. He told me, older African guy, and he was like, um, aren't you a little bit too young to be trying to do what you're doing? And I remember smiling and I was like, well, you know, sir, age doesn't equate wisdom good luck <laughs> pretty much and um i left and i have not looked back and I, I wonder what would have happened if i would have internalized that because that was a fear of mine at the time i was 25 and it's like well who do i think i am at 25 years old being self-employed and trying to build a company on my own i need to wait till i'm older i need to wait until i'm married i need to wait until this that and the other as opposed to doing what god called me to do when he called me to do it and i'm so glad that i took that leap of faith i'm so glad that i stuck it out because the last four years have been a lot. I mean, it, interesting, I guess is a better word because it's been ups, it's been downs, it's been peaks, it's been valleys. It's been a lot to learn, a huge growth process for me, but I'm grateful because God has sustained me and fulfilled every promise to me um, that he's given me so far. And so for this episode, I wanted to share four things that I've learned from being self-employed over the last four years. And I'm not here to talk about the surface level things you know some things that you need to know make sure your business has the uh resources and not even just the resources as in money but make sure your business has the proper systems and things in place the and the proper structure in place to be able to sustain itself as well as you because you and your business income is not the same. So you need to make sure that your business has an, enough to sustain itself as well as enough to sustain you. Also be willing to make sacrifices. And these, not, these aren't even my points, but just some things I want you guys to know. Be prepared to make sacrifices. I gave up getting my nails done for a long time. I learned how to braid my own hair on YouTube because I just needed to do something to look neat because <laughs> I didn't have any money to do much else at that time. Um, but yeah, this episode is really focused on just some four quality things that I've learned over the last four years. And the first thing is that the person behind the platform matters. You matter as an individual how you're really doing and not the brand that you're putting on. I know we get into this, oh, I'm a boss mode, LLC Twitter is a thing. Like we all get into, you can get into this mode and, and present yourself in a certain type of way. And sometimes you have to, you know, you can't let your potential customer know that you're struggling because that's not going to help them make a decision to buy from you. So it's understandable that you can't put everything out online, but that doesn't mean you, that you should neglect who you really are and how you really feel and the broken areas that need to be mended. One of the things that I always say is that broken people build broken brands and businesses. And one thing I learned over the last couple of years, especially when I was in that space where God told me to shut my business down, I was upset. I didn't have a business. I was self-employed. I had a couple products and I didn't know how I was going to make the money or how what type of business I was about to create because God just left me in the dark, it's, it seemed like. Um, and during that time, I was wondering like, okay, well, what is this gap 
what is this space supposed to be? And I thought that he was going to teach me things about business or I needed to sharpen my business acumen. And actually during that time I was in therapy. I was in therapy by myself. I was in therapy with my mom. I had got engaged in that period. So I'm in premarital counseling, learning how to uh, be a wife to this person. So bruh. I be a wife to this person, so I didn't realize it then. It felt more so like pain then, right? It felt like God was just torturing me. But one thing about fire is it it refines. You know what I mean? And the Bible says that we'll walk through the fire and not get burned. We won't even smell like smoke. So when we get put into the fire by God, we come out refined. And what that refinement looked like to me was dealing with a lot of those broken areas within myself, dealing with my confidence issues. I've built so much confidence over the last four years. Like when I look at pictures of myself now, recently I've logged into my old Snapchat. Now, listen, Snapchat was in these streets, Tatum. <laughs> Snapchat was pre-Christ. And I'm looking, I got into the Snapchat and I'm looking at all of these pictures and stuff. And I was, I'm laughing because I knew where I was at in each of those pictures. But just looking at myself, I'm like, man. And then, and then comparing that to just a photo of myself today, I'm like, man, I look different. And I remember we did a brand photo shoot when I got back from having my son when I was getting back to work. And we got the pictures back and I was looking through them with my husband. I was like, man, I look different. He said, you, you're you a lot more sure of yourself now. You're a lot more confident. That, that I look different thing is confidence. And I believe that this confidence that I have and this boldness that I have and this certainty and surety that I have about who I am as a woman, who I am as an entrepreneur, what I'm doing and what God is doing through me, that came from building the person behind the platform. That came from the stuff that ain't posted, the stuff that doesn't make an email newsletter, that isn't attractive for a podcast. That's that real work of making sure that when this microphone goes off, when this camera gets cut off and when I'm just by myself at the end of the day that I have I'm happy and secure and have peace that matters you guys that matters because you can build a platform and you can have all of this success but if you're not okay then what is it really for the second thing that I learned over the last four years is that there's no one size fit all to success there's semantics in everything. And I said this on a live that I did on my Instagram that everybody says that, oh, millionaires wake up early until there's a millionaire that doesn't. <laughs> there's no one size fit all to anything. It's about what is going to work for you, what God has called you to do in the lifestyle that you want to live. And I talk to you guys a lot about the decision going into starting a podcast. A big part of that initially was I wanted to build a brand online while still maintaining the freedom and the privacy of my day-to-day -day life. Building a brand on social media meant hiring photographers to take pictures, always having my phone out, buying this equipment and setting up. St I don't like, I don't like to do that. I like to live my life without my phone. Most of the things I don't even have pictures of because I just want to be, <laughs> you know, I don't want to do perform or uh, do all of these things. I just want to be. And so podcasting gave me the freedom to do that where I can show up on the microphone and cut the cut, cut the camera on and record a video and audio of a podcast. But then that's one hour a day. And with this bonus episode, it's about to be about 10 minutes out of a whole 24 hour day that I get to then do what I want to do offline. And so a lot of people at that time were saying, no, you need to do this. You need to do that because that's what had been proven to work up until that point but you have to be fearless enough and bold enough to try a new route and if it doesn't work out that's okay and we can i guess make this a 2a don't be afraid to get it wrong don't be afraid to fail there is no failure all things work out for the good of those who love the lord like it's okay to fail it's okay to not knock it out the park the first time but the lessons in that is a lot more valuable than whatever the success you're looking for may be 
The third thing that I've learned is if you are a visionary, meaning you are somebody who sees the big picture and you the big picture excites you and you're driven by that, you need to also learn how to or connect yourself with people who are builders. Builders are people who are um, worried about what's going to, what are the details between point A and point B. So a visionary is somebody I'm like, oh, I'm about to have the number one company in the world. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. But a builder will make sure that you are doing things in decency and in order, that you're taking care of the foundations to be able to sustain the big vision that you have. Um, and then if you are a builder, somebody who is very detail oriented and you're worried about the steps and the checklist and all of that, you need to tap into your inner visionary or connect yourself with a visionary because they're going to remind you of what all of that is working towards. If there's a documentary on Hulu about the WeWork company, which is this um, co-working space that just blew up to be this billion dollar valuated company. And um, I think, I forgot what year it was, but basically they tried to go public. It was revealed all of the um, flaws <laughs> within their business structure and all of the smoke that the visionary CEO was blowing was finally revealed. And when the smoke clears, there was really nothing of value there. So this billion dollar value was built off hype and not actual structure. And so it, it blew up in his face. And I suggest watching that, especially if you're a visionary, to see the importance of having your ducks in a row. But that's what happens when you are a visionary, but you don't know how to build, is you get so caught up in the big picture that the details start looking fuzzy. And then if you're somebody who is um, so caught up in like the details and the day to day and all of that, you can easily lose focus and lose sight on what the bigger picture is and you won't be able to make the best decisions because you're making the best decision off of one part as opposed to what the ultimate goal is and so this is something that I've learned one thing that I've realized about myself as an entrepreneur is I embody a little bit of both of these and I'm really appreciative of that because that doesn't really come along often and um, I'm a visionary but I'm also a builder but sometimes I've flow into the visionary more. Sometimes I flow into the builder side more, but I have to maintain that balance and make sure that when I am uh, really immersed in the day-to-day and the details and the structure of my business, I have to make sure I take a step back to remember the big picture. What are we working towards here? And then, and even maintaining that visionary side of me when it comes to making decisions. Like, okay, here's this opportunity that came up. This opportunity is great, but how does that fit to the big picture? How does that fit to the vision, the ultimate goal? If it doesn't, and it's just a good idea for right now, let's let it go. Because I would rather turn this down in order to better build um, the big picture than work for these scraps if that makes sense. So again, if you're a visionary, tap into your inner builder or surround yourself with builders because they'll be able to reel you back in. I have a lot of people in my life who are visionaries and people who are completely visionaries for somebody like me is it's exhausting because they get so caught. It's like they're scatterbrained sometimes. It's like, oh, I want to do this. And then I'm doing that. And then this came up and then I'm doing that. And oh, this is about to be. And I'll be like, Okay, so how does that translate into what's happening right now? Like, it's, okay, calm down, really back, and not like to be a dream killer, but okay, let's now make this practical so we can get there. Like, I want to be there with you, but you so far in the deep. Like, we gotta build the boat, sis. But um, oh, cool. uh oh, Lord. gradual build the boat sis but um okay calm down really back and not like to be a dream killer but okay let's now make this practical so we can get there like i want to be there with you but you so far in the deep like we gotta we gotta figure out how to swim first <laughs> so that was number three and then the last thing that i learned is be lean this is probably the biggest one. Be lean with your time and money. Again, be lean with your time and 
your money. This is a good follow-up to being a visionary versus a builder because tapping into that inner builder will allow you to understand where your time needs to go in order to get to the big vision. And especially when we are wearing many hats within the business, it's easy to get all over the place and it's easy to, to get distracted by every bright, shiny object, but you have to be very focused. Lean with your time, lean with your money. Don't throw money at everything. Throw money at what's going to get you to the goal. Throw money at what's going to have a return on investment. Throw money at what's going to free up your time so then you can use your time to make more money. So be lean, you guys. Trim the fat, cut the unnecessary spending. You don't need to buy red bottoms to show the internet that you're successful. Take that $700,000 and put it into the business. Put it into a savings account. Put it into a retirement account because you got to provide that for yourself. <laughs> you are uh, self-employed. And I had this conversation recently. We've been saving money in the business. And so I have like a, a good five figures in savings. And I'm like, okay, um, talking to my financial advisor, like where's the best place to put this? I'm not going to be working forever. And my business is going to be making money forever, but I don't, I'm not going to be working forever. I still want a retirement. So now that we've saved up this money, where's the best place to put it? So save your money, save your money. I'm going to say it one more time. Save your money. Do not spend money trying to impress the internet, trying to keep up with the Joneses. And what I also mean by save your money and trimming the fat is I see a lot where people are saying like, oh, I need to charge more or you need to charge more, triple your prices, double your prices. And I'm not saying don't do that because some, sometimes that is necessary. I mean, don't, who, who, excuse me, I had to burp. That because some, sometimes that is necessary. I mean, don't be out here charging $200 for a six month coaching program where everybody gets one-on-ones and you're dedicating 80 hours a week to one client. Like, no, that doesn't even make sense. But a lot of the times, the more money that you need in your business to do things is found in the frivolous spending. One thing I love to do is cancel stuff. <laughs> I'm always looking for a way in the business to save money. And especially when I, um, earlier on, uh, being self-employed, I just had a simple spreadsheet of everywhere that I spent my money. So whatever email marketing software I was using, whatever payment processor I was using, website hosting, everywhere that I had an expense for, I had it on a spreadsheet. And every month I would look at that spreadsheet and be like, what can get deleted? What am I not using? Because more money doesn't always solve your problems. Sometimes you need to just go and look at the resources that you have and find the money that you need. And I learned this recently with um, my husband because now he's the CFO of the company. And um, I was telling him I wanted to raise the prices of our podcast and retreat. I'm like, look, we've done this multiple times. We have all of these success stories that come out of this. We've proven ourselves time and time again, like we're way better than where we were when we started. Let's charge more. I feel like we can. He was like, yeah, you can, but why? And I was like, what you mean? Why? I want to make more money. He was like, if you want to make more money, find the money in what you're making. And I was like, man, whatever. Right. <laughs> Being having an attitude. But I went back to it. I was like, you know what? You're right. I want to make more money. How much more money do I want to make with this? Let's find it. He said, Tatum, find the money and the expenses. And if you want to make more money, instead of charging more, maybe increase the capacity of the people that you take on. So that way, that automatically increases how much you're making, but you're not charging the customer more. Some this is a, He's like, this is a good price. It's a price to where you're not devaluing yourself, and it's a price to where it may be a stretch for some, but it's obtainable. And, it, and where because we plan so far out, we break prices. We try to plan out as far as possible because we want people to be able to make payments on things in a way that's comfortable for them. It's just an added convenience. But he was like, you know, you, you are making this affordable for people. Keep it that way. And I was like, you know what? You're right. 
So instead of me charging more money, let me get a lot more lean with how we're spending money on certain things. And also let me increase, increase the amount of people that we bring in and then make even more adjustments on the back end so that we can be able to accommodate the new amount of people. So just again, be lean with your time and mean and, uh, <laughs> and mean, be lean with your time and money, trim that fat. Sometimes you don't have to charge more to make more. You just have to look at where your resources are going. And that's not even just with money, but that's with time as well. If you cut out social media completely, imagine, and you just focused on, because some people may be like, okay, Tatum, I need social media for my business. So let's say you just focused on promoting your business on social media using scheduling softwares, but you cut off your actual consumer uses of social media. You will give yourself so much more um, time in a week that you're not scrolling. Say that you woke up an hour earlier and stayed up an hour late. Now that two hours plus the time that you were spending on your phone scrolling or, or doing miscellaneous things, you can now put back into your business. So trim the fat trim the fat. So that's it for this bonus episode, you guys, on the four things I learned from being self-employed these past four years. Recap, number one is the person behind the platform matters. Number two is there's no one size fit all to success. Number three, if you're a visionary, learn how to build and vice versa. And number four, be lean with your time and money. Trim that fat. That's it for this bonus episode. That's a little longer than I like them to be, but I had to get it all out. Thank you guys for listening to uh, this episode of the Blessed and Bossed Up podcast, and I'll talk to you next week.